pictured here is some dude with the Uzumaki spiral for a belly button, and somebody who has been waiting his whole life to make a comment like this one. Bro got spun around like a pinata by the doc when he was born. He was getting ready to lasso someone with the umbilical cord with the kid still attached. Hi again, guys. And if there's one thing the internet knows how to do, it's being mean. There are some folks out there I would unironically call poets who can twist the English language into sentences that hurt more than stab wounds. And as an enjoyer of fine literature, today I want to look at some of these very unique and rare insults, all stolen from the Rare Insults subreddit. If you enjoy this video, there will be this big card at the end that takes you to another one like it. And did you know that only a fifth of y'all are subscribed? Do better! If you subscribe and hit the bell icon, you'll never miss another upload, and you can always undo it later if you decide you hate me. What do you genuinely not understand? How I get taller and more handsome every time my grandma sees me. She shrinks and her eyes get worse. Reading that reply on your Reddit notifications has to feel like taking buckshot to the chest. The worst part isn't even the insult, it's the emotional damage that commenter is gonna be stuck with forever now. He obviously can't tell his grandma somebody said that shit because it would be evil to dunk on her like that, but every time he sees her, all he's gonna be able to think about is that she's deteriorating, and that's the only reason she thinks he's improving at anything. You have a doppelganger and probably share DNA with them, a new study suggests. So someone looks exactly like me? That's very unfortunate for them. Damn, immediately going for the self-deprecation angle. It's almost like a backhanded compliment because you are putting yourself down, but you're also successfully kneecapping a stranger on the other side of the planet. Speaking of self-deprecation though, be honest with yourself, viewer. Did you think the same thing about your doppelganger? Did you think they would be unlucky if they looked like you? Well, stop that. You need to have some confidence. We're not here today to put ourselves down like that, even if you are actually ugly. Stop thinking about all that stuff. We're here to laugh at other people for now. Even if you are a hideous abomination like me, it's okay. Speaking of hideous abominations, y'all know I wear a mask indoors for a reason. It's not exactly pretty under there. It's like looking at the surface of Mars. But luckily, I have today's sponsor, Tej Hanley. They helped me get started with a skincare routine by streamlining the process, and it works a charm. If you asked me, I would recommend going with their level one system that has all you need to get started. A daily face wash for getting rid of dirt and grime on your skin, a twice a week exfoliating scrub for evicting dead skin cells off your face because they were late on rent, a very smooth morning moisturizer with SPF 20 to help protect your skin from the sun, something you should always be doing, and lastly, an evening moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated when you're conked out at night. Teach Hanley is great because they make things easy for morons like me. Every box comes with an instruction card that tells you how to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. It makes it super convenient and easy to keep a routine because of it. What I'm trying to say is, their products make my face look less like Mars and more like Uranus with how smooth it is. Don't just take it from me though, there are over 5,000 five-star reviews on their website from satisfied customers all around the world. Teach Hanley members also get tons of benefits, like 20% off the retail price, the ability to customize your box, exclusive monthly deals, the option to pause and cancel your membership at any time, low-cost shipping internationally, and free shipping in the United States. And because Teach Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering quite viewers a great deal. Just click the first link in the description and you'll get 30% off your first box plus a free gift. Don't miss out on this amazing deal. Click that link and get started today. Sometimes when I can't sleep, I think about how Kevin Durant's feet are shaped like Olive Garden breadsticks. As easy as it is to laugh at the brutality of this one, this is some shit I would only say on the internet. With dogs the size of those, Kevin could literally crush me underfoot. He's like the big robots from Origins that you have to let step on you to get the elemental staffs. You're as original as crabs in the evolutionary tree. Need a PhD to tell that when it's stand up, jeez. The fun part of these insults where you only get to see the reply is imagining what they were replying to that motivated them to cut that deep. You have no context for what prompted this level of hater behavior, you just have the results. It kind of makes them perfect reaction images. I imagine that within half an hour of watching this, somebody will screenshot my channel and then put that text next to it. How do you have a bigger belly and a six pack? You look like a ninja turtle. That is certainly a unique body shape to be. I am dangerously curious about the workout plan to get that physique. Give him a shell and he can be the stunt double in those Michael Bay movies for the CGI monsters. We need a slur for toddlers. <laughs> in Polish, we have whatever the hell this word is. I'm not even gonna try. Either way, it roughly translates to shitlings. My objection to this is that this insult is only rare if you don't speak Polish. The only widespread rarity here is how many Polish speakers there are. Only 40 million? You guys gotta get your numbers up. You're so fucking far down on the leaderboard, it's embarrassing. You should have gotten that colonial influence going back when it was still in the meta. You snooze, you lose, buddy. I wish for the ability to switch between normal sight and sight that makes me see all the people that want to have sex with me. Granted, you now have the ability to close your eyes. I'm gonna pretend the dude who posted this actually wasn't able to blink at all before. So even though they know they'll never get laid, the lack of sex means nothing in comparison to finally being able to moisturize your eyeballs. People who get diarrhea from Taco Bell are weak, and their bloodline is weak, and history will forget them. You can feel the 
the liquid hatred ooze off this tweet as it drips into your mouth. Kind of like how the Taco Bell diarrhea in question leaks out your asshole. I'm not gonna lie to you, this insult absolutely applies to me. Taco Bell is like a drug that flushes out all the gunk from my body. It just gets everything out of my system. I don't think my stomach picks up a single grain of nutrition from a Taco Bell quesarito, but does that mean I'm doomed to obscurity for my shamefully weak stomach acid? Q is too high up in the alphabet. I respect it, but it has no place between P and R. It should be at the end with the weirdo slash goth letters. I feel like if you tried to fit in Q with those edgy letters at the end, it would get kicked out for being too round. X, Y, and Z. They are all edgy as hell, literally. You could impale so many bodies on an X, and don't even get me started on the creative configurations with a Y stabbing. They would all discriminate against Q for having all those curves. The only other place I could see Q really fitting in is if you moved it to before P and right next to O. But then O might have this weird purist thing where since Q has a straight line in it, O would consider them a mudblood. Just a mutt, not really a rounder. <laughs> you have the aim of a person who has a good paying job, a wife, and a family. <laughs> Best way to insult a gamer. As much as I loathe to use the term gamer because of all the connotations, this is true. There's nothing more embarrassing as a person who plays video games than having your life together. If someone asks why you're so dog shit over the game chat, and you try to tell them it's because you have a life outside of playing video games, that shit is not gonna fly. They'll have no sympathy and bully you for going outside, and you'll deserve it. If you aren't sweating out a hundred hours a day, you're practically worthless as a person when it comes to Call of Duty lobbies. Imagine buying an expensive stroller for an ugly baby. <laughs> With this reasoning, your mom must have pushed you around in a wheelbarrow. Uh, that reply translates to, you deserve to be in the dirt as a baby. <laughs> Can you imagine telling someone, I wish you as a toddler was dead? Not the current most annoying version of you, you, you before you did anything. <laughs> now that the idea is out there though, for recycling purposes, I don't think it's half bad. If you take a wheelbarrow and just drop some mulch or sand in it, you'll save so much money on the production that goes into making strollers. Who's gonna care? The baby? It's not gonna notice. It will not be able to tell if a fluffy pillow or a mound of rocks is what's supporting its neck. It'll be fine, it just builds character when they're young. It also potentially builds brain damage, but that's the fun part. So many furries in one flight. Tag them if you know them. I object to that many furries being on the same airplane, because if there were an accident, it could basically cripple the American IT industry in an instant. This is what I've been fucking saying. People persecute furries on a daily basis, but they don't understand what kind of fire they are playing with. They want to risk destroying the entire social order because they find some people, what, cringe? We need those fellas to maintain a functioning economy. Show some respect. If I was a senator, I would motion to make them high-profile, high-value personnel in the eyes of the U.S. government. We need to make sure they're well looked after and nothing bad happens to them in the name of American national interest. One time in middle school, I dated a girl for four days, and when she broke up with me, she posted on Facebook, sometimes your knight in shining armor is really just a loser in tinfoil, and to this day, that is the sickest burn I've ever gotten. Listen, I know that in middle school, a relationship going strong for four days is like having ten years of a healthy marriage, but that's because we were only capable of thinking in intervals of five days at a time. Even still, that's enough time to have planned for a post like that to go out. The girl probably thought of that insult and just wanted a good scenario to use it in. She probably saw this dude she always thought was a bum, entertained him for a single digit number of days, and had that Facebook post scheduled to go up for exactly when she knew they were gonna be breaking up. Insanity. He's gonna sneeze once and turn into an active shooter with them buttons. I have no words, other than these ones, I mean. I mean, what the caption said could be true. In fact, it could be the entire strap. Homie's just out for a night on the town when some folks start getting a little aggressive. They try to get up in his face acting tough, and then one flex of those bulging abs, and that person has several bullet holes in them. When's the last time your dick has gotten direct sunlight 50 pounds ago? <laughs> My guy decided to just pass on voluntarily, huh? I figured that this dude thought he'd get beat up in the replies no matter what he said, so he's all, fine, I'll do it myself. He got to go out on his own terms instead of at the hands of another. The puddle at the gas station. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I think that suit is absolute flames. That doesn't really help here, though, because gas station puddles are also very flammable. We've got this fella who's done nothing wrong and probably just wanted to take a selfie because he was feeling good about himself on a particular day. Then this motherfucker comes along. I scanned his bangs and got 15 cents off on a can of beets. Now that guy is gonna flinch any time he looks in a mirror. He is never gonna risk having self-confidence again. It's not even because he looks bad, it's because he's scared he'll hear the sound of a scanner beeping when the light hits his reflection. Why'd you like my picture from 2017, weirdo? I'm not weird, you just haven't looked good for a while. I don't know if there is a respectful way to say, you looked better five years ago, but if there was, this is probably as close to it as you can get. Saying it as casually and as neutral as possible, like there's no opinion on this, it's just monotone. Uh, I'm not trying to be weird, you just look ugly as fuck these days, that's all. JFK and Jackie met because he was eating sheet metal alone and asked her if she wanted some. I have no idea where this, the Kennedys loved consuming sheet metal meme came from, but it's one of my favorites. And it's probably true, let's be honest. If the human body evolved to consume metal and rocks directly, everybody's jawline would look like a Kennedy's. You know, before it got 
splattered on the side of a car. They said he looks like an imaginary friend. This could be taken as a very positive thing, you know. Friends are often imaginary, meaning they are unrealistic. They could be unrealistic because they would be too good for this world and their virtue is too good to be real. If someone says you look like an imaginary friend, it might mean you look like what a person imagines a real friend to look like. That is to say, you'll die a virgin and alone. <laughs> Top reviews from the United States. One star. The Pope's stance on premarital sex is more adjustable than this thing. This is another guess what they were talking about type post. Probably a camera tripod or something equally as annoying to get in the shape you want it. Kind of like my body, right guys? <laughs> you can create unique jewelry from old unnecessary things. Why does this guy have the face of a lumberjack and the body of a white mom? All right, I'm going to be honest here. I included this one for selfish reason. I do not care about the insult. I've been looking for a sweater similar to this one for ages and I have not been able to find the exact one. It isn't the one in the picture, but it has like a weird kind of pseudo turtleneck thing and it's it has more like all these threads that are squares. It has like different shades of light and dark grays in it. It's made of this really soft thin thread material and I can't find it anywhere, but I really want it. So if y'all have any idea what I'm talking about and could help me find the name of that shit, I'd literally cream. Back to the insults. You sound like the kind of person who's always wanted to step on a crunchy leaf, but never got the crunch. These insults are probably the most hurtful because it's about something that you ultimately feel pity for another person over. If you didn't get that crunch out of stepping on a leaf, it's probably just the cherry on top of how much you've been let down and disappointed by everything else in your life. Yeah, that is rough. I think I need to take some time for myself after that one. Yeah, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. That card should be on screen now. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you enjoyed. Thanks again to Teej Hanley for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check them out, the first link in the description. Remember, don't go after anyone I talked about today because that's cringe, and this is meant in good fun. Anyways, this has been Quite, and I'm out.